Hey there, this is Craig with Remax. And um, hey, thanks for joining me here for the market update for October 2017. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take a quick look at what's going on in the market in Corona specifically and what we saw uh, happen last month in the market um, for uh, Corona's market as well. So um, bear with me. I'm not wearing glasses. Oh, by the way, I'm not sitting here in a white T-shirt. This is actually a Remax shirt. Yeah. And um, so I'm in uh, I'm in uniform. All right. <laughs> All right. Give me a, a moment to pull this up. I'm not wearing glasses because I don't want you to have to deal with this annoying glare. Um, and so hopefully I can read this. You know, it's funny. I was about 41 years old uh, and uh, my wife goes, honey, why are you doing this when you look at a text? And I realized that things were fuzzy close up. So thank you, 40s. Here we go. All right. So if we're looking at what's on the market and what's closed, here's what we have. So this may be a shock to a lot of people, these first few numbers. Uh, I was a little bit surprised. Um, in fact, I was probably surprised in a different way than, than most. Uh, short sales, we have currently, we have 16 short sales that are on the Corona market. And that number is a little bit higher than I would have expected, actually. Um, and we'll have to watch that and see if, if that changes and, and if we start seeing uh, more repos come through. So um, we'll, we'll pay attention to that number in the future. Um, how many auction homes? These are homes, not courthouse auctions. These are homes that sell um, that are either short sales or maybe repos, and they decided to, to uh, sell them through an auction process. Um, there's one whole auction home in all of Corona uh, that's on the market active right now. Repos, this may be a real shocker. In all of Corona, we have one whole repo home that's active on the market right now. That's crazy. So there's not a huge REO market or repo market. Um, there's not uh, a huge um, auction market and the short sale market uh, is not huge. I mean, by any stretch, we, we had hundreds back in 2009, 2010, 2011. Um, but uh, to see only 16 uh, right now, um, I'm curious to see if that number climbs or, or goes down. We have um, 354 standard sales on the market. And uh, boy, so what is that? 360, 70, 375, something like that. Uh, math is not an exact science. In fact, that's why I'm not a lender. Um, I would really be a bad lender, but I'm a pretty good realtor. So uh, I'm going to stick with that one. And uh, But we have somewhere around there, uh, that number of homes on the market currently in Corona. Now, back in 2005, when the market was absolutely out of control and crazy, we had anywhere from three to 500 homes on the market. Homes would sell within sometimes 30 minutes, three hours. But but I mean, if the house I'm and I'm, I may sound like I'm joking here, but if a house sat on the market for more than three days, we were all kind of wondering what the heck was going on with that house. And we're really seeing the same type of phenomenon here uh, right now where homes are hitting the market, they're hitting and then they disappear pretty quickly. Um, case in point, there's actually a home that I brought a buyer to. And um, the house had been on the market for um, uh, 14 or 16 hours, something like that. Um, I was able to get the buyer in. Of course, we made an offer. It was a gorgeous home. And then there were multiple offers on this home. Now, that wouldn't be super surprising in the three or four or $500,000 price range. But this house was priced at 685 and it went up over 700 pretty darn quickly with those multiple offers. And of course, uh, terms were changed as well. Um, I know all that may be foreign to you and it would really uh, probably benefit if you're thinking about buying in the, in the next 30, uh, 60 or even 90 days to have a conversation with me so we can kind of work out what some of that stuff means. But back to this. Um, so this, uh, so we've also got um, probate sales. There are three probate sales in all of Corona. And that's where somebody had passed away who owned the home, had passed away and uh, they didn't have a will or a trust, which is a, a, a really good thing to talk about sometime in the future. Um, if you do own a home or if you're going to own a home, you'll definitely want to set up um, some kind of protection uh, so that your family um, can, can you know, benefit from the equity and make sure that um, 
uh, your estate is settled properly. But um, three homes in Corona, which actually is a little bit more than I would expect. And then we've got 269 homes in escrow. So we've got about 100 less homes in escrow than are actively on the market. And what that means is if you're driving around Corona and you're, you're like, come on, Craig, there's a ton of homes on the market. Well, you may be seeing a lot of signs up in the air, but what those signs represent are almost half um, of those signs are sold in escrow and uh, probably going to close within the next uh, uh, day to 60 days. <clears throat> um, so this was interesting to me. Also, I sent an email out last week. You may have seen or last month, rather, you may have seen it. And it was an, uh, kind of a written email with a lot of these figures in there. And I'm just going from memory, but um, I believe the number of homes that sold last month were 188 or 198 homes. So um, uh, that's that's interesting because we're getting into the slower part of the market, slower part of the season. So um, that number has actually climbed to 221 homes. That's how many homes closed escrow in October of 2017. So it's very interesting to see it climb because typically that number would go down because, you know, people are getting into school, kids are getting back to school. Um, uh, you know, uh, we've got holidays and all that kind of stuff going on. So, um, you know, lives get busy and, and uh, there are less sellers and less uh, people shopping for homes during this time of the year. We also typically see the pricing go down a little bit, but we're not experiencing that either. So it's an interesting time. We'll see what next month, uh, December, um, you know, tells about November and what January tells about December. Um, I would expect that those numbers are going to tail off a little bit and that we'll see pricing go down, which is typically a great time to buy. So it, again, if you're thinking of buying in the next 30 to 90 days, this may be a, uh, a great window of opportunity for you. Interest rates are still really low. Um, there's still some inventory. And if we have less people buying towards the end of the year or the first part of next year, then it might be a great opportunity for you to get in and just not have to, to fight uh, you know, this bloodbath to try and get a home. Um, this is the number of homes that sold in the last three months. It's 679 homes, which is 226 homes per month. That's 300, I'm sorry, that's 35 days left of inventory. So in other words, if nothing changed, no, no new homes hit the market and we continue to sell at the rate that we're selling, we would be out of homes to sell in 35 days. That is a very, very hot market. So um, that's uh, uh, good info for you. Um, if you need help kind of disseminating what this means, aside from what I've, I've uh, explained in this video, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we can kind of talk about what some, of, um, uh, what some of those numbers mean or could mean. And again, we'll definitely want to watch and see what happens next month. So again, if you're looking at buying in the next 30 to 90 days, this is a critical time. I recommend that you reach out to me so that we can make sure that uh, if you don't already have a realtor, I mean, I certainly don't want to step on anybody's toes, but if you don't already have a realtor, I really recommend that you reach out to me so that we can kind of talk about what might be a good plan. We can talk about what some of this stuff that, that um, I mentioned in the video might mean to you in your home search. We'll also look at what the, um, the real estate market traditionally does and where I think it's going and what the future might hold and whether or not this is really even a good time for you to buy. I mean, interest rates are great. Uh, market is increasing, which means that there's a potential to make some equity. But we also know that the market will come down. So um, we can look at uh, some past data, historical data, and see if we can figure out if, uh, if this is a, a good time for you or not. Um, and by the way, it's not a cookie cutter answer. It's going to depend on uh, your particular uh, wants, needs, and, and lifestyle. So um, let's have that conversation. And, uh, um, you know, if you're a little farther out than than the 90 days, we might still want to have that conversation to make sure that you're on track and see if there's anything that could help shorten that time frame while we're here, knowing what the interest rates interest rates look like today. Hey, I appreciate you spending the time with me. I hope this information was helpful and I look forward to connecting with you very soon. Thanks a lot. Take care.